Gators, I know it's been a while since you've had a vodcast, but I uh, just thought we should touch base with uh, some again to keep these skills up uh, for when it comes to finals time. Um, so we're going to talk about ancient Greece. Okay, uh, here's a map of what ancient Greece would look like. We have Macedonia located to the north, uh, Greece, which is here. Um, notice the composure of Greece. It looks like a lot of different islands um, and a couple peninsulas here and there. All right, so here we go. All right, so geography. Okay. Oh, remember again, you were to write a summary uh, on this. So pause and pause alike as you would like uh, throughout the video and make sure you take down notes and create a great uh, summary for this. All right, here we go. Um, so like I said before, it's made up of a lot of islands in the peninsula. Um, many of the landforms are mountains. Uh, the islands are actually tops of underwater mountains and only one fifth of the land uh, is farmable. And so um, all these kind of physical limitations uh, led Greeks to be called to call themselves islanders okay and they called themselves islanders for a couple reasons uh, the first reason that they called themselves islanders I'll draw a little arrow over here so the first reason is that they literally lived on islands okay um, as we noticed before you know Greece and we'll see here in a moment as well um, that Th it really was islands, and that's why they called themselves islanders. And I should say lived on islands. Scratch that out and put islands. Okay. And the second reason they called themselves islanders is because they developed what they call these um, city states. All right. This is the form of government, and we'll talk about that here in a moment today too. And within city states, they developed their own. Um, kind of civilization and government okay and as we saw previously and we'll see again with the map because of how divided they were um, they literally you could live within maybe 50 60 miles of someplace and the cultures be completely different all right uh, and then finally like i said they thought of themselves as different countries okay and this point goes down with that one all right okay move it on all right, so here again, um, we see a map of Greece. All right, so see, it says Greece right there. Okay, and um, so to kind of give you an example of that, the two most famous uh, city states in Athens er, in Greece are Athens. Okay, and then we have the city state of Sparta, and Sparta was located mm, roughly around here. All right, that's Sparta. Okay. Not as you can notice from the map, not that great deal of a distance difference in distance. However, because of the views and ideas of the cultures, they developed really differently. And we'll discuss more about that um, as we move on. If you've seen the movie 300, you can you already know what I'm talking about. Uh, but that's just another point. And there are many other city states uh, throughout. Uh, Athens as well or throughout Greece as well another reason I want to show you this map is notice all these mountains okay this is all part of ancient Greece and because of that um, you know all of these would have different cultures on them as well all right so the origins of Greece okay uh, it started with a culture called the Minoans all right uh, and they lived on the island of Crete and they were a sea trade network um, that had a lot of great culture however as you hopefully have picked up on um, many civilizations get conquered by others okay so around 1400 BCE they got conquered by somebody else um, a great thing about the Minoans is that they adapted these ideas from the Egyptians and Mesopotamians and the Mycenaeans were bullies okay not really bullies, but they they came in and overtook the Minoans. All right, and so instead of being centered on the island of Crete, um, they ended up having their um, focus be more on the mainland. That's where they wanted their power to be. All right, so yes, they did control parts of the Aegean Sea, which is the sea between that is located between Greece and modern day Turkey. All right, 
Um, and they also had parts of the Mediterranean Sea. But that was mainly the Phoenicians that had control of the Mediterranean Sea. So don't forget about the Phoenicians. They still are around, all right? Um, and the Mycenaeans, Mycenaeans, sorry, the Mycenaeans uh, continue on with this Greek idea. And they are the ones that speak modern Greek and wrote in it as well. So this is where we get modern Greek from or from the Mycenaeans, okay? And they were eventually conquered by the Dorians. Uh, and this starts a dark age of Greece. Um, a lot of things happened during the Dark Ages was that there was no more trade to the outside world. Okay, writing pretty much vanished the ability to write. Okay, which is not good. And we'll discuss why in class, or maybe you already know why writing's not good. Um, and then also, you know, the culture uh, changed as well, or got lost. All right, so those are really three huge impacts um, from the Dark Ages of Greece. So here we have a picture of um, the Minoans, all right? And you notice a couple things. One, it's very colorful. Could you imagine, you know, this is thousands and thousands of years old. Still has a lot of color to it. So being on the island of Crete, I can only imagine how bright and bountiful this would have been. Um, beauteous, not bountiful, beauteous, sorry. Um, and then also, too, they are representing how powerful they are in sea trading because of all the different boats that they have. Uh, on here as well. Alright, um, lastly we're going to talk a little bit about government. Alright, so again we talked about this idea of a city-state where these villages to to make sure that they weren't overthrown by other people um, they join together and they all each have their own style of government and laws. So each city-state had different laws and government. No two were alike. Alright, mostly were controlled by aristocrats. If you don't know what aristocrat is um, it is somebody who's very wealthy, very powerful, okay? Um, so they look, and they rule pretty much with an iron fist. You do what I want when I want you to do it. Um, this eventually leads to a middle class um, that eventually takes over the government, which is great because, as we know, um, to, from today, middle class is usually the ones that run uh, government. They're the largest bodies. They vote the most, they, they do a bunch of things like that, okay? Um, so from there, we have um, Solon, all right? And Solon was a, a leader. He was a very wealthy middle-class person, um, but he did not like a lot of the laws um, about government, how government should be run. He didn't believe that government should be run by aristocrats or by a single person, that there should be many people uh, that run it. So he begins to start these laws, and this is where we get the idea of democracy from, okay? Um, so Athens becomes this leading power uh, with democracy, but there are limitations to it. Okay, one of the biggest limitations is that your a you could only some of the limitations were that one you could only be a man, right? Only men could vote, and if um, and the last thing is that both of your parents had to be citizens of Athens. So both your mom and dad had to come from Athens. If one of them didn't, or one of them wasn't a citizen of Athens, then you could not vote. So this dramatically reduces the pool of people uh, who can vote and make decisions. All right. If you have questions, bring them to class. I know this is a brief introduction uh, to ancient Greece, but we will dive deeper into this uh, here in class. Make sure you write that summary as well. I'll talk to you later.